This video has been sponsored by Brilliant. More about it later in the video. In my last video, I introduced the latest version of my ant simulator. With the addition of multi-threading, I was able to implement collisions between ants. This new mechanic led to an interesting emergent behavior. The outgoing and incoming streams to the colony naturally separated. However, this version had two issues, one of which was particularly troublesome. Let's start with the simplest one, the ants animations. Although my initial approach worked in broad strokes, it had a major flaw. All six legs often moved in unison, making the ants look like they were hopping instead of walking. After a few unsatisfying tweaks, I decided to study a real ant for inspiration. Filming one of those tiny creatures with my phone was tedious, but I eventually captured usable footage, and examining it turned out to be absolutely fascinating. I'm amazed at how nature manages to miniaturize and optimize such incredibly complex systems. But I'm digressing a bit from the original topic. From what I've observed, ants seem to have two distinct walking modes. The first looks like a regular, medium-paced walk. For this case, it seems a leg can move only if none of the other two legs on its side, nor its mirror counterpart, are already moving. Of course, the real mechanics are far more intricate, but this simplification will do for now. The second mode resembles an all-out sprint. In this case, it seems that each cycle consists of just two steps, each one moving a group of three legs. These trios are always the same, each made up of a leg from one side and two from the other. Since this pace appears to be unusual, I've decided to set it aside for now. With these observations in mind, Let's go back to the simulation to improve the walking animation. We'll keep the same basic principle, but add constraints to the legs. Take this one, for example. If it moves, it locks the other legs on its side, as well as the one directly opposite. Let's look at another example. Here's what that looks like in slow motion. And here's the final result at regular speed. There's always room for improvement, of course, but this is definitely a step forward. The second issue is much more fundamental and strikes at the very heart of the simulation, the marker system. As ants move about, they leave behind traces whose intensity fades over time. This process ensures that by following the gradient of these markers, ants can reliably find their way back to the colony or to a food source. These markers naturally degrade, allowing paths to adapt as the environment changes. In the initial version of this project, both the degradation of the markers and the reduction in their baseline intensity occurred in a linear fashion over time. For reasons I can't explain, this approach completely failed once I upgraded to the new version and added collisions. So I tried a different mechanism for the markers, each one directly storing the walk time. An ant only updates a marker if its own time is shorter than the stored value, otherwise it leaves it unchanged. As some of you have pointed out, this removes the reinforcement effect of multiple markings and makes markers less elegant, since they now carry extra data in addition to their intensity. In the end, the solution turned out to be remarkably simple. Replace linear decay with exponential decay. This small tweak solved all my problems and, from what I understand, models reality more closely.
Let's see if this change has any impact on the ant's behavior. We'll start with a simple scenario, similar to last time. The new marker system doesn't appear to alter the ant's behavior. We still see the same separation of flows and alternating paths.
The simulation looks like it's working well. Now let's try it out in more complex environments. There's still so much left to add to this project. I'm really excited about adding obstacles as the next feature, to see how they will affect the routes. If you want to try out this project and support the channel, it's available via Patreon. You can also join the Discord server to delve deeper into the topic or suggest ideas. All the links are in the description. I would like to thank all the Patreon members for their amazing support. I'd also like to thank Brilliant, 
the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is a great platform for learning a variety of scientific disciplines. It emphasizes understanding principles and formulas, rather than rote memorization. Learning is made especially engaging through interactive visual activities, something I personally find both enjoyable and highly effective for grasping new concepts and building intuition. These activities are accompanied by real-world examples, making each topic feel more grounded and tangible. Plus, the highly motivating progression system allows you to improve with just a few minutes of practice a day. It's even easier since the mobile app lets you do it from anywhere. Check the link in the description to get a 30-day free trial and 20% off the annual subscription.